have anything on my phone. I don't know. I was like, I'll just look at my home screen. My disgusting, messy home screen. Why would it be disgusting and messy? Because I'm traveling. Because I'm traveling. That's oh, why. okay. Everything's... Okay. Look at this. Look at this mess. It's disgusting. That is really bad, actually. <laughs> it is. <laughs> See? I wasn't kidding you. It's terrible. 32. If you got a, an iOS update to do? Oh, no. Uh, that's a Twitter DM hiding in a folder. <laughs> and you have... Badges for Twitter DMs when you travel. I'm in conference mode. I need I need Twitter DMs. On. All right. You didn't even ask me about the 32 in the folder as no, well. No, I said the number and then quickly moved on. What's 32? 32 what? Okay, 30, 32 is my email app hiding two folders, oh. two rows over. Because as well, I have to turn on one of my email accounts Why? when I'm traveling. Why do you have to? I have to for like tickets and hotels and like notification. It's just like, it's too impossible to be the lockdown version of myself that I want to be. Mm. I've got 19 items on OmniFocus. A badge has appeared on my calendar. I don't even know what it is. <laughs> Let me find out. I don't like traveling gray. Oh, it's a, it's a notification about a change to a flight. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. There we go. I have cleared one badge while we started the show. Did you want to clear that badge? Yeah, it's, it's cool. I'll, I'll look at it later. We're back in San Jose, California. <laughs> it's WWDC time again. We are sitting around the exact same table that we sat around last year, just through some beautiful stroke of luck. I've got the exact same hotel room, <laughs> which is amazing. I believe it has been dubbed the mic suite. Yep, the suite. It's very, it's very sweet here. And so I was able to coerce you to sitting in front of me again. I think I did try to push for the separate rooms mm -hmm. and then again immediately caved because I realized that it would require me to bring equipment. And yep. I was like... For this summer of traveling, no equipment. So we're in, we're here in person. Yep. And I'm looking, looking right into your eyes, my eyes, which makes me a little bit uncomfortable. But they're just, they're so big and bright, <laughs> and they're they're mm -hmm. as full of life and enthusiasm as a memoji, and it's making me a little uncomfortable. Well, I can't. We can't talk about memoji <laughs> yet because we'll lose the rest of the episode. I think at this point, I'm able to just say equipment. And then we can just, and that's, that's my way of convincing you. You've learned one of the buttons you can press with mm -hmm. me, which is the, can I bring fewer things mm -hmm. or, or prepare less? And if you can press that button, it's like immediate sale. <laughs> so here we are. We're back in San Jose. There's been a big addition to San Jose this year in the form of electric scooters. <laughs> in some cities in the US right now, there are these, these I think, two companies that are dropping scooters, littering scooters into the city Littering. this i imagine kind of like ticker tape parade type style a, a truck comes by and a bunch of scooters get thrown out of the side and you can sign up in these applications and you scan them with a qr code and then you have access to these electronic scooters which probably travel at like maybe 10 to 15 miles an hour yeah 50 miles an hour is what they top out at um, and there's a bunch of controversy around it because whilst we have been here they have been banned in san francisco really yeah Wow. The exact scooters that we're using are banned in San Francisco now. Right now? Mm hmm oh. So I wouldn't be surprised if by the time this episode is released, they are banned in San Jose. Really? Because it's just the next town. <laughs> like, like I'm looking over, the, I'm looking out the window. Like, are they, are They're they still there. Away? Are they taking away, are they taking <laughs> any, away my scooters? At any moment, the scooter police may come in and take them away. Oh. And this was one of those things where it was like, I don't know if I'm really a person who typically would jump on it. 15 mile an hour scooter and ride it through a city mm -hmm. but it was like oh yeah okay i'll give it a go and there is this arc that that we've been talking about with people where you're a little trepidatious of it you get on it you're not sure it starts going you fall in love with it and then realize how horrifically dangerous it is as a mode of transport for you and everyone around you <laughs> but mike they're really fun. Yes, They're they are really super fun. duper fun. There was a moment where, where it was me and you and some of our friends and we're like zooming down uh, a little street mm -hmm. and it was just this really weird thing. What am I doing right now? It's super fun. I, I, was, I was very interested to see these scooters because I've been vaguely reading about them on mm -hmm. places like Hacker News. And it's one of these things where you keep hearing about like, there's cities where there's piles of scooters in the street. Yep. Like I don't really under, I never really understood what it was and people were complaining about them. Like I just didn't get it. Yeah, Cause when you're done with them, you just get off and leave it wherever you want basically. And, and again, like with all of these things that 
the company suggests the kind of areas you're supposed to park them in. And, you know, they say, oh, of course you're wearing a helmet, right? Like yeah. all these little wink, things. Wink. Yeah, yeah. Like, and, you know, it's, oh, don't, definitely don't ride them on the sidewalks. But yeah. literally everybody rides them on the sidewalks yeah. because they're not fast enough for streets. Yeah. One of the apps asked me to scan my driver's license. Mm-hmm. And I noticed there was a little X on the screen. So I just clicked the X oh. and let it let me right on through. Oh, it's like, I didn't know like, that. Driver's licenses are required. We just want to verify your driver's license. No, I'll do it later. Sure, that's fine. Keep please, driving the please scooter. Please get on the scooter. So we need you. We need you. And they're so cheap. as It's like a couple of dollars for like a 10, 15 minute ride. It's like, I see the utility in them, but they're a, nu- they're a nuisance. It reminds me of Uber. When Uber first launched and like all of the cities tried to ban it mm-hmm. and then they had to slowly work with each city mm-hmm. to get them to come back. It reminds me of that because it's like you're you're taking something that is established, you're changing it, and it's disrupting stuff, and this, all of the traditional lobbies don't want it to occur. Mm-hmm. And then over time, these companies have to find ways to work with these cities because otherwise they go out of business. Yeah, the Uber comparison is an interesting one because, uh, like, you know, when... Much to my surprise, I was convinced to try one of these things. And then much to my surprise, I totally loved it. Yep. Like, it's just fun to ride. Uh, it was like a fun novelty for the first day. But there there have now been, I think, three or four times where I have legitimately run an errand on those scooters. And I realized, like, sort of like Uber, it solves a very particular transportation yep. problem of, oh, I need to get to the Walgreens. The Walgreens is far enough away that is going to be like a 15 minute walk which is too short for an uber yes but then this scooter turns that into a four minute walk yep right walk in quotation marks because you're going 15 miles an hour down the sidewalk wearing your helmet and mm-hmm. with your driver's not on the sidewalk course. yeah no not on the <laughs> not on the sidewalk of course wearing my helmet in the road yeah wearing my helmet in the road and doing proper hand signals mm-hmm. uh, on this scooter that i would wouldn't want to let go of with two hands like i'd want to hold tight right yep. close so it's like but it was genuinely interesting to notice an, an immediate change in behavior in myself of a kind of expansion of the radius of the city, like how far away is the city. And I did the same thing where I went to a co-working space to work and I was like, oh, this makes it really achievable to go and, and come back. So I think they genuinely solve a short distance transportation problem in a super useful super interesting way precisely because they're left everywhere so Mm -hmm. you can just pick one up and when you go to the place you can just leave it and and it is great but it is very obvious as well that like these things are kind of a public nuisance being strewn about everywhere but that's also the advantage of them they're kind of a nuisance on the sidewalk but that's also the advantage of them and I am very interested to see how this how this shakes out. Have you heard of uh, the jump bikes? No. They're like, it's a bicycle that is part electric powered. Mm-hmm. And Uber bought them hmm. a while ago and they've just launched them in London. Oh, interesting. So it's like a, a part electric powered bike and they're called jump and they're coming to London now. Is it the same idea though that people just leave them everywhere? No, it's kind of like... Um, a cross between these scooters and our current like city bike system. Okay. So mm-hmm. like there are places that you pick them up from and leave them. Hmm. But if they're prevalent enough, like our current city bike situation, in a lot of places you can get them basically anywhere, right? Yeah, it, but like I think it's interesting. Like I can see now why people feel so divisive about the bikes. Mm-hmm. I like I, un, I un, now I understand in retrospect all of these stories that I've been reading mm-hmm. that they're this nuisance, but they're also amazing and they're great. Like they just totally solve this problem that I never really thought of as a problem before, and I don't know how it's going to shake out. But even things like oh, we're going to have designated dropping spots. It's like yeah, but that just. Like, oh, well. Yeah, it's one of the great things about these is that you just find one mm-hmm. when they're all GPS, so you can look on the app and find one near to you and you just get off it. Mm-hmm. And and then there's, do you know how they get charged? Yeah, I've been hearing about this, that they send, they send like children around to go well, pick them up and charge let's them. Let's not say it's like that so much. You as an individual can sign up to pick them up, mm-hmm. take them home. They send you this specific type of charger and they pay you like $5. Or so. They give you an amount of money, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like the gig economy on the other end of it. Yeah, exactly. It's quite an interesting business model. Like a, 
you can see people just driving around in vans and just picking them up. They take them home, they charge them, and then just put them. I guess they're told to put them in a specific place the next yeah. day. I was I was looking at it, and that's what they say is like they they give you drop off spots yep. to try to put them, and and presumably again like everything, they're using a computer to figure out like where's the best spot to leave them, where do people want them. I know they're they're super interesting, and we were, we have all been saying like they're so fun, but it is inevitable that they're going to be banned. So it is amazing to me that while we are here. They have been banned, uh, but but I I think they're a real plus to a city. And in my like most optimistic timeline, the existence of these bikes would encourage municipalities to have better um, separated biking lanes. Like that would be the best possible right. outcome. But that's an outcome that takes decades, you know, yeah, to do. And again, like we keep bringing up London, but since the introduction of the city bikes. Mm-hmm. There are much better bike lanes in London mm-hmm. because they basically created new ones. They call them like bike super highway or something for these bikes when they were created. So like, and this was because it was a part government back scheme to mm-hmm. put them in. So, but I think what these scooters show and what all of this stuff shows is that there is a change in the way that people want to move. Mm. And and you're completely right. Like I have somewhere I want to go tomorrow, which is a 35 minute walk, Mm -hmm. an eight minute taxi drive. Now, Mm -hmm. neither of those are great. Yeah. But these scooters would be perfect. That's like maybe like maybe like 10 minutes or 15 minutes or whatever. And that's Mm -hmm. perfect for something like this. And it's showing I think it's showing a lot about the way that people today are outgrowing the way that their cities allow them to move yeah they're really at the intersection of a whole bunch of different things mm-hmm. and i i've found it very fascinating to see them here uh i've i've found it great to like to use them to find out immediately that like oh this solves all these problems like i've yep. i've thought of so many cases where if they existed in london i've realized all of these point to point walking journeys that i do that i would totally replace with the scooter and now now i'm frustrated with the technology of walking. Like, like, I honestly have found myself thinking, why am I walking to some place like a chump? Right? Why mm-hmm. am I not on a scooter right now? And, but I think that is a sign of how perfectly a technology is solving a problem. Yeah, but uh, just the issue with them is they are dangerous. Yeah, They yeah. are, like, they go too... They, they go, go way too, too fast, fast on the sidewalks, without a, without a doubt. For everyone, for yeah. you and other people, but they are not safe enough to be on with, with cars. Oh, yeah, there's no way. Like, every... Like, uh, I I have ridden them on the roads every time, but you know, of course, of course, of course, because you're a law-abiding citizen a with your big helmet that I've seen. Yes, you with, wearing. with my big with my big helmet and my respect. It has for lights on the back of society. it so people can see you. Yeah. All of those, things. all of the all of those things. Um, but no, it, it, it would be crazy to drive them in the streets. It, it would feel like you're just asking to die. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's there's no good place for them, and this. And this, uh, this along with all the other kinds of things like um, the various segways and boosted boards, and yep. like it feels like we've just hit this. Yeah, there are so many tech, boosted boards like, here. I mean, we're in California, so it makes sense, but they're they're just everywhere as well. Yeah, and I've been seeing them pop up in London as well, along with like oh, uni- really? like these unicycles, and yeah, oh. like they're, all of these things are are popping up. My understanding is part of all of these things have come into existence because a bunch of segways' original patents have expired, like with self balancing, and so mm-hmm. now these things can exist combined with where we've reached with battery technology. But like the the point is there's a million different companies coming at this same problem from all of these different angles of short distance electric transport. And I like I feel totally convinced that these bikes have shown there needs to be physical infrastructure changes in cities in order to accommodate them. Because they're a they're a third solution that just doesn't doesn't fit on sidewalks, doesn't right. fit in roads. But in like in this potential future are you operating these though or are they autonomous oh right? these scooters? That's, that's the other way of getting around this kind of thing right is that humans just don't drive them at all that's how you remove the well i say you change some of the safety equation i mean yeah okay now if we can fast forward to a place where all the cars are self-driving as well and they feel like oh everything's very safe then then that does change things but that that seems to me like oh it's too it's too far off right, right? like we've got scooters right now I don't want to walk ever again, Mike, mm-hmm. right? Starting today, how do we solve this as fast as possible, right? Put you on one of those, like, what are they called, rascal scooters? <laughs> you get one of those next. I think they're more generally accepted than these other type of scooters. I just, all, all I know is walking is for chumps now. Yeah. That's, what these, that's what these scooters have taught me. 
This episode is brought to you in part by our friends at Squarespace. Make your next move with Squarespace. They'll let you easily create a website for your next idea, giving you the ability to grab a unique domain name, take advantage of beautiful award-winning templates and more. Whether you want to create an online store, a portfolio of your amazing artwork, a site for your business, a site for your restaurant, a site for your band, a site for your blog, no matter what type of website you want to make, Squarespace is the only one platform that will let you take care of it. There is nothing to install, nothing to patch or upgrade. You don't ever have to worry about any of that stuff because Squarespace has got it covered for you. They have award-winning 24-7 customer support that you can take advantage of at any time in case you need any help, but it's so easy to use. I would really be surprised if you did, but it's there if you need it. They can let you take advantage of beautiful templates that really show off your great ideas to the world. It's so easy to customize your Squarespace website as well, but you don't have to keep tweaking endlessly. You just set it all up and get going. In fact, you can set up your website as part of a free trial that you can set up with Squarespace. Just go to squarespace.com slash cortex and you can sign up for a trial with no credit card required right now so you can play around with it and see what Squarespace has to offer. Then, once you're ready to put your website out to the world, their plans start at just $12 a month. When you decide to sign up, use the offer code CORTEX and you will get yourself 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain and it will show your support for this show. Once again, that's squarespace.com slash CORTEX and the code CORTEX to get 10% off your first purchase. We thank Squarespace for their support of this show. Squarespace, make your next move, make your next website. So even though we've been at ScooterCon, there's other stuff. <laughs> there's other stuff happening. Uh, we, of course, we are here for Apple's WWDC Worldwide Developers Conference. Yep. Um, and we are in San Jose, but something that is 15 minutes away from here is Apple Park, which is Apple's new campus. And every time we come to California, we always go somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and typically, in the past couple of years, we've been able to get tours of a building. Mm-hmm. That does not happen at Apple Park. You do not get tours of that building. But they have built a visitor center. Mm -hmm. Now, we have been to One Infinite Loop, which is the previous campus. They have a store, Mm -hmm. and it's a very small Apple store. That's it. Um, But I think Apple very cleverly knew that this had become a bit of a destination for for visitors in general. So at the new campus, they built an entire building, which has in it a store, a cafe, a kind of has an AR experience, which is just kind of information about their building, which they're very proud of. They're very proud of the building and the AR experience. Yes. And it has a roof deck as well, where you can go up and you can take pictures of the huge circular mm. building. So what did you think of it? I mean, there's there's an interesting thing. So when we, when we went today, when you pull up to see, you know, Castle Apple Park, like this, yep. this infinite ring... I think they have a moat around the edge of it so that you can't approach too closely. A very peculiar looking fence is what it was very strange. It, a fence with no horizontal slats, just vertical, just lots of poles, aluminium poles, I'm assuming. I'm just assuming that if you walk through any of those two poles, Apple has some kind of instant stun laser yeah. that just knocks you unconscious yeah. and then the grass opens up below you and they, you go fall down a chute. Yeah, that foliage yeah. is hiding stuff. <laughs> yeah. Like there's no, you know, it's not just, it's not just trees. Yeah, like you wake up two days later on the beach in San Francisco thinking, what happened? Like that's, <laughs> I think that's what happens if you try to get too uh-huh. close to Apple Park. The building is so enormous that I found from the from the vantage point that we came up to and where they have this visitor center, you just lose all sense of of scale of mm-hmm. it. Like it's it's so big that one of the things that happens is it almost looks like it's flat again. Like you almost can't yeah. realize that it's a curved structure. Um, and I had been closer to it when it was under construction and like had this feeling of how enormous it really is. And so I, f- I feel like I had a better sense of how just tremendous it is but it's it's a funny trick of the brain where the thing becomes so big that you lose all of your normal frames of reference and then it almost feels like not that it's small but it it feels like it's way smaller yeah. than you think it is yeah i've i've had an experience like this before mm-hmm. um in bucharest there is a building called people's house or palace of the parliament which mm-hmm. is there's a whole. Th- this is a whole thing. Yeah. I actually did an episode of Ungenius about about the history of this building. Yeah, you you sent me the Wikipedia page on this one. Yeah. and it was one of those things where when you sent it to me and I'm reading through it, I'm thinking, how did I not know this existed? I think it's like the second or third largest man-made structure on earth, like it, only behind the Pentagon. Like it is 
mammoth. Mm-hmm. And it's the same thing that I found with Apple Park with these two buildings. Anytime you are close enough to it to look at it, mm-hmm. your eyes cannot see all of it. Mm-hmm. Like you have to move your head to see the edges. And that kind of scale is so wild Mm -hmm. like it breaks everything that you because it it never can look as big or as like it never just looks right it looks almost too big and too small all at the same time it's very 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 peculiar but again i've only seen what i've seen from the outside but it is unbelievable yeah to look at it it really is I, i keep thinking of um uh when I used to play Magic the Gathering, mm-hmm. Magic cards like they have mm-hmm. giants are are a standard feature, and there's a there's a joke in the game about how every giant requires birds for scale. And as soon as you tune into yeah. it in the artwork, yeah. you realize it's like, oh, there's a giant thing. You have no sense of scale, so they'll put like a flock of birds, very tiny, mm-hmm. like flying around. It. And that I think Apple Park needs to just constantly release doves from out from out from the center, right. and then you would realize like, <laughs> oh no, my no, I think it God, is. it's enormous. <laughs> right, that's. That's my suggestion for Apple Park, but it's it's a beautiful building. It it, it really is a beautiful building. It's it, it's nicely set. Like it's again, I think it was like it's like a castle because it's up. Like yeah. it's, it's They're like higher built, than built every like a hill basically yeah. to put it on, which is probably where all the secret chambers are in the hill. Yeah, and it's also a better as a defensive structure, yeah. right? If if you're up you got to have the high ground. Yeah, everyone need, wants the high everyone, ground. Yeah, without the high ground, you have nothing. Uh, <laughs> But, it, you know, and I, I just, you know, as a as a obvious fan of this company, there is something to be said about effectively building the ancillary parts of a museum, the mm. gift shop and the cafe. Because when you then go there just to look at it, you don't spend 10 minutes and leave. Your journey gives you an hour. Yeah. You know, like we went and looked around the store and you buy... The T-shirts you can only mm-hmm. buy at the store, right? Because that's your merchandise right. for making it. And they also sell everything else that, you know, you can buy all the... Of course, you can buy an iMac Pro if you really need to. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking of just grabbing one for the trip while I was a, there. <laughs> I have a podcast to edit later. <laughs> uh, but then also you can go and sit and I had an Earl Grey tea. Like, mm-hmm. and, and you can appreciate... There's this weird kind of like feeling of it almost being like a gallery anyway because it's so beautifully built. Yeah, the, the visitor center... I don't know. It, it's it's not a mini version of the main building, but it's it's like it's there to inspire the idea. It's closer of it. to an Apple Store, a really nice Apple Store in design, mm. um, and you can see all these little elements. Like the roof looks like the store they just built in Chicago, mm-hmm. and the handrails and the stairs are like the stores in London. Like it, they're just kind of showing off everything. There's like this corridor where the bathroom is, which is one of the most beautiful corridors I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, you know, they they made it this thing for people to go to when really like the, the old store, One Infinite Loop, just looked like a not very good Apple store. Yeah, it, it looked like they took some offices that were against the window, knocked yep. out the windows, right? Put in a door. Because well, that made wasn't, a store. Th- th- you are right. Actually. I think it's oh, kind that, of what happened. Is that literally what happened? The, <laughs> I, have, uh, I was told that by a friend who used to work at Apple a long time ago that the store used to be inside the building and was more like the company, the company store. company store? Okay, that makes and sense. And then, pe- then they started to kind of open it up to the world a little bit and turned it into an Apple store because there wasn't always Apple stores, right? Mm-hmm. But they had the kind of company store where you would go right, of course, and of buy course. the new products when they were released. So, But then they kind of opened it up to the world. But I mean, when we went there a couple of years ago, like that's not your day. Mm-hmm. Like we went there on the way to Facebook. Yeah, we just, we just, because we, we knew we stopped yeah. off, we wanted to see it, you know, we took a picture in front of the Apple flag and stuff. And then it's like, and then you just keep on going. But you're, you're right. Apple did a great job of making this. It's not like a full day expedition, but it's a place that you want to go. We spent uh, like our afternoon, you know, like a p- big part of our afternoon there. It was nice. Yeah, you go, you take a look. It's a it's a beautiful setting. You can sit up sit upstairs and and you know look at the building and be in the sunshine, and then you go down and get some refreshments. It was, and it's a nice space to be in. You know, for for a thing that is also a, like a busy retail environment, they did a good job of giving you these spaces to just mm-hmm. be like the cafe has a lot of space and it's separated from the store and the upstairs has a lot of space and is separated from the store so they did such a good job of giving you a place to go if you are a fan of this company and i think they also probably saved themselves an enormous amount of hassle patrolling that perimeter right because they can tell everybody go to this place here's the visitor center 
You can take some pictures. Like this is the spot to because yeah, they don't want people to be in there. Like it's it's almost it doesn't it doesn't it's impossible to get in there. Yeah, like it's very 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 hard. Yeah. You know, yeah. I've come close so many times, and then they like they do a little bit of research. You can't come yeah. in here. Um, and I I do understand. Like I almost find it strange that we've been able to go into as many buildings if we as we have been able to go in mm-hmm. because all of these tech companies are so very secretive about what they do anyway. It is almost funny to me that I've been able to go to as many companies as I've been to. Yeah, I, I think I felt that most strongly when we visited Facebook. Mm-hmm. It's not that I wouldn't have expected Facebook would give tours, but it was just that once we were on the inside, it was such a strange alternate yeah. Facebook land. Th- there is danger to showing to the world what they do. Yeah. You know, like that Universal Studios like campus that they built for themselves. Yeah, that's a good is, way to put it. Yeah, I've stole that from someone. Someone <laughs> mentioned, we were talking about this. It, that's what it's like. Yeah. That it's, it almost feels like a risk to show it to people because, you know, from talking to people at Facebook, they seem very, you know, they're very adamant, like, you know, we don't sleep here. We don't live here, right? But, but nobody believes right. that. Yeah, and nobody, when you nobody see believes that. When the you the fact see it, that you, you can, can get a haircut there if you need it, it, it doesn't enforce that idea. Right. And, and we haven't actually spoken about this. We'll get to it at some point in the future. But, like, Facebook are building a village. Yeah, yeah. That's been on our list for yeah. a while of, of, like, we thought we saw the, the walled city of Facebook. And it's like, oh, no. no, no they are literally is, building yeah, one. But that is yet to come, <laughs> right? This was this was just the start of it. But, but, I, but I agree. Like, that was where I had the feeling the most strongly. Like, I can't believe that they're letting us tour this and i'm still so grateful that we were able to do that like that was such an interesting day even though i had to lay down on the floor in my bathroom and st- stare at the blank ceiling for a while to like <laughs> defrag my brain from the whole oh, experience i, I got an rift by the way <laughs> i bought one I, I lasted like two days and I'm, now i have one and it is as good as it was in that place okay i've got to come over to yeah. your place then and we're gonna i we're played gonna the VR. game that, so you know the game we played on the train mm-hmm, mm-hmm. they've Epic made a game based on that. Mm-hmm. And I can only play it for like 15 minute chunks because mm-hmm. it's way too intense. <laughs> it's way too I intense. I have to like, I love it, but I have to take it off. Like I can't, I can't do it anymore. <laughs> All right. I'm definitely coming over to your yeah, house then it's, sometime it, to do that. There's a game called Beat Saber. Oh, it's like a rhythm game. My God. So you've <laughs> so good. Anyway. As soon as, as soon as I'm back. As soon as I'm back from, <laughs> from my summer from of traveling. Yeah, I will be. All um, right. I'm going to go right, right out of Heathrow, right to your Just door come straight and knock to my on the place, door. Hey, the cottage. let's do some VR. But no, it is it is an interesting thing. Like we could get into Facebook, we can get into all these other places, um, and they were and they were they seem genuinely happy to show us around. Uh, and they have then, a whole program for yeah. visitors and yeah. everything. And then uh, you know, Apple is Apple, and they are they are Fortress Apple upon a hill, uh, but they also built the world's most beautiful fortress. It's the most desirable one to get into. Right? <laughs> yeah, they've made it worse. <laughs> yeah, like not only was it hard before, you've now built this like I don't even know how to describe it. Like, it's kind of like a statue to themselves, right? It's kind of a way that we were describing it. It's like this thing, which is, you have built a tourist attraction. Mm -hmm. Well, like, previously, it was a tourist attraction because it was Apple. But now you've built, you have a piece of architecture that people just want to look at Mm -hmm. and then go inside and see the garden on the inside. Right, but we don't get to see the garden on the the inside. inside. That's not for you. (laughs) So you mentioned about travel. Uh, How is the year of order surviving all this travel? I'm very tired, Mike. Yeah. Are you going to anywhere else after this? Oh, Mike, this is but chapter one yeah. of part two. Well, because I know that there is a big conference which is focused on video, which is coming up soon. I, I don't, I'm not going to, you know, I don't know if you're going, but that's coming up. Yeah. I was trying today to mentally place what what has been going on with me. But yeah, I think I'm dividing up the past couple of months for me. It's two parts. Mm-hmm. We're in part two. This is chapter one. WWDC. Okay. I think the I think I can say that it ends chapter three. VidCon. No, oh, you're going again. Okay. Okay. It's the place to be, Mike. Oh, all right. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know how I missed that. Um Yeah, it's been it's been interesting. Uh it's been interesting because one of the things I'm doing in this part two is I am thinking a lot about the year of order. Mm-hmm. And well because Year of Order was created because of this last year. Yeah, largely because of last year. And you're basically doing the same amount of travel again. 
Yeah, depending on how you want to count it, like it's I think cumulatively it's going to be more travel this year. It's just okay. it's just broken up a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a space in the middle. But yeah, last year summer of travel was great, super valuable for me to do, mm-hmm. uh, but completely destroyed my life. Yeah, yeah. It, it really did. I was just destroyed, and so that really did get me started thinking about year of order and like I can't possibly do that. So I'm trying this time to be much better. Spoiler alert. Part one, I totally failed at this. Okay. All right, so all of my initial travels, I was not very good. But that's what life is, right? You try to figure out and you try to get better. So for part two, I've made myself a little spreadsheet. And I'm trying to keep track of two things. I've set myself a kind of low but still difficult to achieve goal, which is that I'm trying to be very consistent about doing some kind of exercise on a regular basis and doing some kind of what I'm classifying as real work on a regular basis and real work for the purposes of this summer is doing something that moves a project closer to publication or closer to closure so like we're doing real work right now mike yeah right because we're recording a podcast this is necessary to happen in order to make the podcast go up Mm -hmm. so it's like i'm going to be able to give myself a little tick Right after we're done with this. Right. Because you have at least spent some time today. Yeah, exactly. Pushing something forward. Yeah. Right. And so my, like with the way I work, I've mentioned it before on the show, but I, I tend to think of things in terms of units, which for me are about 40 minutes. So the goal is like do 40 minutes of work that push, like that is real work that pushes a project forward. And I'm aiming to do that like, and every seven, seven days do that like five days on average, which... Here's the thing. I know when I say that, that it sounds like there's no amount of work being done. But the interesting thing, like, and, and what I've come across on this, this conference in particular is, like, the reason we go to these things is it is valuable to interact with the people who are here and to do the events that are here and to go to meetings while you're here. And I'm so aware that taking out time to try to do exercise and to try to do real work it has to play off of taking time away from the very reason that we're here. Which in and of itself is a very valuable work-related thing. Mm -hmm. Like it is networking, it is meeting, and it it is stuff that helps to find new opportunities and strengthen current ones. Mm -hmm. Even finding like a solid hour Mm -hmm. every day to do work in can be tricky when there is all this other stuff going on, which you wouldn't technically class as typical work. Right. But there is, depending on how you're approaching something like this, there is a work benefit to it. Yeah. Like, again, thinking of last summer, the things that got done, like, would I consider them real work? No, but they were super important. And they're exactly that kind of thing. Like, you never know what comes out of meetings. You never know um, just, like, where conversations mm-hmm. can go, even if they don't pay off for, like, three years, right? Or you just, like, you start establishing relationships with people. It's a really valuable thing. Uh, and it's just, it's been very interesting for me to being very deliberate about I'm trying to carve out this time and realizing it's like, man, it really, it is really hard to do that on a consistent basis when the very reason you're here is to spend as much time as possible uh, doing the the things that you came here for. So I'm I'm happy with what I've done so far, but like I'm just, it's it's one of these cases in life where I'm just very aware of these Mm trade-offs. Uh, so like I basically in the mornings, like if I, if I wake up early enough, like I'm trying to sneak out and go get coffee and like take all the, the less populated routes to the coffee store and back to the hotel to try to be able to get back into my room without running across anybody and like getting swept into the maelstrom of the day. Uh, and it's like, it is hard or just finding a little window of time between yeah, events. You're, you're also in conflict with the exact reason that you've made the trip yeah exactly right? it's like i've come across avoiding the face of the earth yeah. avoiding <laughs> everything is kind of s- silly yeah. otherwise y- you've taken such disruption mm-hmm. out of your life anyway why even do it if you're just gonna s- hide away in a hotel room all day yeah right yeah it's a so this is i feel like for for the year of order this week so far being at wwdc has been an interesting case of 
I think I've hit it pretty well attempting this balance between maintaining some kind of regularity in work and health while I'm traveling, while also participating largely in everything that's going on, but not everything because I am sneaking away sometimes. I've been thinking a lot of um, like what you think of as, as decreasing marginal utility of things. And so I'm just very aware of like, yes, the first half an hour of exercise is, is like a great marginal increase in what the day is like. And the same thing with the first unit of work is a great marginal increase. Yep. So like, I'm just trying to hit the maximum point on that curve and then like bail immediately and then, and then do all the things that are the very reason that I'm here. So yeah, but I'm very tired. Even though this is probably, I reckon it probably end up being a similar amount of work that you probably did on the last trip. It is the system of having this like i've checked this off this i guarantee will make you feel like there has been more order to these trips yeah it, yeah it is also partly keeping the order i mean yeah. i i will disagree with you because last year the amount of real work and particularly exercise was like okay. horrific i understand I, I i did not do well at all um but but so already i feel i feel much better about this balance but again i was i was thinking about the year of order and just uh you know in my mental time frame of when years are like, oh, I still live on teacher time and the year starts in the summer. I'm just letting you know now, and I think I've gotten it on the record before, that the year of order is not a year long project. Mm -hmm. It's not the year of order. It's going to be the regime of order. Like this is going to be a longer thing, but I'm feeling good about it. This episode of Cortex is also brought to you by FreshBooks. Hey, freelancers, come on, you know how important it is to make smart decisions for your business, right? One of those smart decisions is helping you save time and frustration. That is what FreshBooks is all about. They simplify tasks like invoicing, expense tracking, and even getting paid online. FreshBooks has drastically reduced the time it takes for their over 10 million customers to deal with their paperwork. In fact, FreshBooks did some studies and worked out you could save up to 192 hours with their incredible cloud accounting software. Why would you not want to do that? I just came back from traveling. Whilst I'm traveling, I always have to take care of some regular business tasks. You know, my business is always running the stuff that needs to be done. And with FreshBooks, I'm able to get my invoices sent out so fast, I can get back to doing whatever it is that I need to do. It is so simple to log into FreshBooks. I can get my notifications from my notification center there so I can see exactly what's changed since the last time I logged in. I can see who's viewed invoices. I can see who's late. I can get all the information super quick. And then when I'm sending my invoices out, it's all in a what you see is what you get interface. So what I see is what my client's gonna see. And everything is filled out so fast, I can get it all sent off and I don't have to worry anymore. And the same is that I don't have to worry when I'm traveling about sending chaser and reminder emails because FreshBooks will do that all for me. If you're listening to this and still not using FreshBooks, fix that problem. Come on. Go to freshbooks.com slash cortex right now and you can take advantage of an unrestricted 30-day free trial just because you listen to this show. There's no credit card required. You just go to freshbooks.com slash cortex and then when they say, hey, how did you hear about us? Say, you heard about them from the Cortex podcast. Our thanks to FreshBooks for the continued support of this show and Relay FM. I have ticked off a huge year of branching out moment last night yes we had a live show last night um for one of one of my tech podcasts called connected and we had a big theater and we had a big audience and it was a big production it was really good there are very few things in my professional career just any amount of work that i do where when it's completed i say that was perfect mm -hmm. this was one of those things it was just everything went perfectly absolutely not one thing I would want to change about the event. Uh, the show went great. Meeting everybody was amazing. Everybody that came was wonderful. I got to have so many of my friends come out and see me do this thing. It was fantastic. It was so good. Yeah, and I got to say, as a as an audience member, as like you, you ended up with an amazing venue. Mm -hmm. uh, you were up on stage. Like you guys killed it in the show. I felt I I really felt I was sitting in the audience just like beaming with happiness for you guys because I could just it's one of those things where you're you're at an event and you can just tell like man this is just going great like yeah. everything about this is going great uh and so yeah it's uh it was a big big like it felt like such um just being in like a semicircular theater with a balcony yep. and everyone like it 
felt like you really put on such a thing. We had like spotlights. And yeah, there was you had a spotlights. Red velvet curtain. You I'm know, sure there were stage and gaffers. I don't know. There was yeah. like things. We had production managers, and yeah. it was. A, and we had a green room. Yeah, you, oh, which there had a you TV go. in it, so we could see the stage and could listen to it. And dressing rooms. I had a dressing room. Uh, it was. It was so good. It, we, it was at a, it's a location here called the Hammer Theater, which is, um, I think it's part of the university here. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they, as also like, we had students helping us out as part, of, like, as well as the, like, the professional people that they have. It was, it was so good. We had, it, the show was just done so perfectly. I absolutely loved it. And this is a massive tick for me professionally. I mean, this week has been a pretty big week for well, me in general. Well, yeah, because when you were saying, oh, you've hit a big tick, I was thinking, which big tick yeah. has has Mike has Mike ticked? Because uh, yeah. if we can jump a little bit ahead, mm-hmm. you did tick the biggest of ticks that I think you possibly can in your industry. Yep. Which is connected, the artwork and the name were shown on stage during WWDC, not not as part of a list or anything but as the center item on the stage while they were talking about podcasts and they showed the Hey Siri play an episode Mm -hmm. of Connected Command on the stage and it was amazing. It was so good. I did not know this was going to happen. Like This is the way, you know, obviously the Apple keynotes are what they are and people make their decisions. Mm -hmm. We had no idea that this was going to happen. And I, I almost blacked out. Like there, there is a part of the keynote that I know happened, but mm-hmm. I don't remember it, which is basically everything preceding this moment. So, like podcasts are now going to be a thing on the Apple Watch mm-hmm. in September, and for whatever reason, they decided that on stage they would show our show. Mm-hmm. You know, there are many more shows with have much more mainstream and wide appeal that they could have picked, but. For whatever reason, they chose to to show connected, and I I think it makes I can see why they did it because it's a developer conference for developers, mm-hmm. and this is a show that's listened to by people in our community, and it was incredible. And one of the really amazing and kind of hilarious things is Getty Images took a photo of Tim Cook mm-hmm. standing in front of the kind of Apple Watch wrap up slide, which is it, these five watches in a row showing the major features and they showed our artwork as in like the podcast thing. But this image is taken in such a way that there are two things in this image. There is Tim Cook and Mm. a huge (laughs) Apple Watch with our logo (laughs) on it. And this image has been used everywhere. I've seen it on Sky News. I've seen it printed in newspapers. Um, (laughs) So many large websites ran this with this image. Uh, I have actually bought rights to the image <laughs> just so I can have it. Right. So you can get the full high resolution professional yep. Getty image. This is mine. Me and my buddy Timmy. <laughs> yeah. And I I, uh, I ordered a fracture of it. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have to ask, what size fracture did you I order? I just went with a small one. Oh, okay. Because I All have right. this like wall in, in my office where mm-hmm. uh, I have a bunch of like professional achievements Mm -hmm. and that's going to go on there and i want them all to be the same size they're all kind of the small size i just i wasn't sure if when i show up to play vr at your house that i was going to discover yeah that there's a wall size printout of tim cook right with the connected and split it in half and ordered two of the (laughs) largest ones yeah and just to be clear that would be perfectly fine with mm-hmm. me. You would be 100% justified yep. if you wanted to make that a permanent wall-sized feature in your house. I could not blame you mm-hmm. because it because it it really is an amazing thing. Like, I, I I I still can't believe it happened. Yeah. Like I it was unbelievable. Like because it just kept happening, right? Like uh, the first part that it was shown, you could see it in a list. They were scrolling through a list. And that was all I needed. Oh, I didn't even realize it. Okay. That so was when I saw it for the first time. There was, li- there was a little teaser preview. Because yeah, what happened to me is they start showing podcasts. Mm-hmm. Now, I had friends who were there. Right. And I started getting a barrage of messages right. just saying, oh, my God, oh, my God. Right. Because the, in, in the WWDC conference is happening live yep. and we are watching it streamed. A little bit like a delayed. 30 second yeah, delay it's or not something. a lot, but it's a little bit. So I start getting all these messages 
and when and I see that they're showing, so I can I know something's happening. I don't know what it is, but something's happening. Mm-hmm. And they start scrolling through this list, and you could see the connected artwork in it. So I start screaming, <laughs> and then they demo Siri mm-hmm. and use the name of our show in it, mm-hmm. and then it just becomes the artwork to show off the feature. Yeah. And we were in the room together. I just lost it. I don't even remember how anybody else was reacting, but I just, it, I've, I, I still can't get my head around it. I've watched it back since once and that I'm sure I'll watch it many more times. It, the, anyone who I guess is kind of in our position would always dream of something like that to happen to them but it feels like such an impossibility, mm. right? Like, the, the, you know, you may one day see your app or a picture that you had taken on a website or the artwork for your music or album or show to be part of an Apple keynote. You know, if you care about this thing, it's like one of the highest honors you can achieve because mm-hmm. none of this is accidental. Like, they weren't just scrolling through a list and, and this show happened to be there. Like, it's all specifically picked... Mm-hmm. For reasons that we have no way of understanding, but to to be in that, what is ultimately a very small group of people, in kind of history, is incredible. And you know, if if this, I'm sure if if this isn't something you care about as deeply as we would, it sounds mad. Mm-hmm. But there is this kind of feeling of like acceptance and like cr- like credit being shown, which is. I can't even begin to express it, like what it means to me. I think of it as a, like a mark of acknowledgement mm-hmm. from Apple is is what it is. Yeah. Right. It's, it's it's like we see you. Yeah. We see what you're doing, and and you know we're putting you up on stage as part of that. And I, I think that combined with doing the show that you did this week, I feel like you you've had this incredible week. And as a friend of ours said, it has been very interesting to see like relay grow over the years as a result of the work that you and Steven have put into it. And it's like the keynote is not accidental and the growth of relay is not accidental. Like it's, it's the result of all of the work that you have put in over all of this time. And it's, I think it it really feels like a bunch of that has just come together in very visible ways this week. And it's like, I'm just, I'm so happy for you, Mike. I really am. I really am. So yeah, it's it's been a it's been a good one. This, this has been one of the busiest WWDCs that I have, and usually really busy means I don't enjoy it as much. It's not been the case this year. No, I think I think you have been a very happy Mike. I'm very happy. You've been a very happy Mike this year. Which is actually an interesting segue. The year of positivity. Mm-hmm. Now the timeline on the year of positivity is up. Oh, is it right? right? So I decided that I was going to be positive about the what apple has been up to after lots of negativity right beginning with wwdc last year to wwc this year now you had preemptively labeled this as the the tumbleweed year <laughs> no no uh, not not a year uh, of tumbleweed it was it was a tumble- wwdc of tumbleweed right, okay. which marks the start of the year <laughs> so then you would assume that a tumbleweed event would maybe not lead into a year of positivity like if you think about all of these things lining together <laughs> so I guess we should talk about WWDC in the announcements. I will give a spoiler alert in saying that my year of positivity is going to continue for <gasps> another year. Because I am very surprised about how good I feel about the announcements. Mm-hmm. So I think we, we'll break down a few of them. There's way too much stuff yeah, for us yeah. to get into here. And, and plus, there is this weird thing about being at WWDC. When you are here and you are participating in the events and stuff, you actually don't get as much information as you could get when you're at home. I'm, I'm going to put a little asterisk on that because I know exactly what you're talking about. It, it's, it's one of the reasons why I really enjoyed coming to WWDC because it's a you know again even though I'm I'm not a developer uh, like I'm not deeply in this world. It's still incredibly interesting but i want to add this asterisk to what you're saying which is yes in some ways by being in wwdc 
you sort of know less because you're not connected to the news cycle in the outside world. You're much less connected to simply the thing where people recap everything that has been done and you, you like you get refreshed in your head about like everything that was announced. Or like the, when, when people find a new little feature and yeah. they tweet about it. Right. right. I, I never read Twitter when I'm at these types of Yeah, you don't, you don't find any of that stuff. So in, so in one sense, yes, I, I agree with you. You feel like you know less. On, on the other hand, there's this weird thing where... You just you're right at ground level zero, yeah. and you have the chance to see people messing around with some of the features in ways that the outside world reporting on it might not see what yeah. can be done. So I, I like I feel both like I know less and I know more from being here. The way that I look at it is I I have a less information, but I have more of a sense of enthusiasm. Hmm. So like I I'm not getting the nitty gritty parts of everything. Mm-hmm. But I am understanding much more greatly what people are excited about because all of the conversation is surrounded yeah. by this stuff. But it does it is also based upon people that are not spending the time yet to really pour through a lot of the information. To go back to um, you know what I'm saying before about being around people is the valuable thing. Like, I have found it really interesting to particularly talking to developers, just seeing like, what is your take on this as the person who has to work with it? And I've, it has definitely expanded my thoughts on Mm -hmm. some of the aspects of the keynote in ways where when I was watching the keynote, I was thinking like, oh, that's neat. And then I realized like, oh, wow, like I didn't, I didn't really understand this. And I think were I not here, I wouldn't really understand it if I wasn't talking to like developers working on various things. So Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's interesting. But the reason my year of positivity is continuing is because so many of the things that I really wanted Mm -hmm. have happened. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get into some detail on some of these a little bit. We know what's happened to the workflow team and we know where that's going. We're getting more like time tracking-esque information about how we use our devices. And there's a bunch of changes to notifications and do not disturb to make them more manageable. Again, I think all of these things, this is typical, never go to the full extent that you would like to see. But movement on this stuff means that focus is being put on the areas that you care about. You know, I, we didn't get any iPad hardware or anything like that. But there was there are hints in some changes to iOS on the iPad that tells me that the exact thing that I'm looking for is coming. Mm-hmm. But I just need to wait for it, which is an iPad with Face ID because they've moved a bunch of gestures around. It's more like the iPhone 10. Right, yeah, control know, centers see, in the corner. It's like, yeah, oh, really? You can see, it, like, they move the clock. Mm-hmm. Oh, why would you move the clock? Why would you move the clock? Oh, it, we got tired of it where it <laughs> we was. We just like to move stuff around every now and then. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of stuff that that is there for me for later. So I, my, my positivity is guaranteed because mm-hmm. I'm still going to get what I want. But was this tumbleweeds like you expected? Okay, I'm going to give you a visual metaphor. All right. Because I know you like the visual metaphor. You're very good at those. Well known. (laughs) Let's set the scene. Mm -hmm. Desert. Mm -hmm. Nighttime. Mm -hmm. A road going through the desert. There's nothing around except tumbleweeds Mm -hmm. blowing across that road. Bam! Oh, Oh, wow. Strike of lightning. Yep. Back to tumbleweeds. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, right. okay. So that's that is my that is my visual metaphor for WWDC. I understand that year. completely. See? Yeah. Isn't it good to paint a picture? There was a lot of stuff that maybe wasn't amazing. There mm-hmm. also wasn't a lot like last year. Mm-hmm. You know, like we got such huge changes and depend on how you take it for good or bad, but they mm-hmm. did do some big stuff. Um I would say there was probably a couple of bolts of lightning for mm-hmm. this, but one. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. We're, all right, go on then. What's the one bolt of lightning? <laughs> well, I, I, just to be clear, to put my cards on the table here, like I said in the last episode, I was not taking a tumbleweed year as a bad sign at all. And I think that this is the best possible quieter year that I could have imagined or hoped for. Mm-hmm. So there's lots of little improvements. The bolt of lightning is obviously Siri shortcuts and what happened to the workflow team. You know, your question was answered and that was the bolt of lightning that came through. And that is also the thing where I was interested in it during the keynote, but having now spoken to developers and seeing what they're doing with it and getting a better sense of what the details of this are, that's the thing that's like, wow, that is impressive. It is unexpected. It was out of the blue. 
Uh, and it, I think it has really huge ramifications. Many, many of the other things I think are much, much lower key. What about iOS apps on the Mac, though? I mean, I know this is a 2019 thing, but like that's a pretty big deal, especially for someone like yourself, where you yeah. are right now with your computers. Oh, yeah. It, it, is, it is a big deal. I think it's fascinating that Apple talked about it ahead of time. I think it's a it's a great move. It is a fantastic public relations move, is what it is. Yeah, but I I think it's I think it is a good move for the platform. I think mm -hmm. it's a good move for both platforms as well. Like I think that's good for pro iPad stuff. I think it's good for the Mac. So th this is this is my kind of feeling on this. So we'll get back to Siri shortcuts mm. in a minute. But basically, what Apple have announced is in 2019 they're going to be delivering tools to developers to allow them to take iOS apps and do some poking around and make them work on the Mac. Mm -hmm. So much so that there are a bunch of system apps that Apple are debuting to macOS this year, which are iOS apps that they have right. ported over to the new system. Stocks. 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 Uh, home. <laughs> Stocks got more mentions in this keynote it so than, funny than it's gotten in the history of keynotes. It, going through the keynote and they were talking about stocks and you're just like, why are we spending so much time on this? But it was a it was a fake out. Right. Yeah. It made Very it made good. sense later on that, that they showed, oh, look, Stocks is on the mm -hmm. Mac is one of their, because it's Stocks, it's Home, there's two others. There's news, news and voice memos. Voice memos. That's what it was. Yeah. So they're, they're showing that they put four iPad apps on on the Mac, uh, but yeah, they were really focusing on stocks, and I think in the room, everyone was like, "Why do they keep talking about stocks?" It like, just seems like, so <laughs> weird. Well, that that was what made it feel like, "Oh no, they have nothing to talk about." It did. Right? It very, did. It, yeah. Really, I think it was very clever. Mm. It was this. Is, I think that they were not stupid about how much time they gave to the stocks app. Yeah. And they knew what they were doing. Yeah, it was a good bit of theater when you think about it afterwards. Yeah. But so this this whole this whole thing this this iOS app on the Mac thing mm -hmm. this was put in the Mac section. It closed the keynote mm -hmm. and so this whole thing has been positioned as a look how great this is going to be for mm -hmm. the mac it's our continued commitment to the mac we're going to let more apps appear on the mac we're going to give you as developers easier ways to make cross-platform applications i think that this is just as big a deal for the ipad as it is for the mac but oh, it's yeah. not what's being focused on because now over the next year developers of, of ios applications will be spending time thinking about how they can make their ipad sized apps powerful enough that they live at home on the mac hmm. like that is huge and also they're talking about this multi-year project my belief is that something that will come from this project is differences in the input methods for the ipad like trackpads, pointing devices. It feels like some stuff could start to trickle down as well as go up. Mm. But I think that this is an incredibly smart move to bolster two important platforms that have significant failure points, yep. which is nobody makes Mac apps anymore and iPad apps aren't powerful enough. Yep. This fixes both of those things and it's incredible. And the way that they are positioning this right now to the community of people that are there is perfect because it's everybody in that room uses and loves the Mac mm -hmm. because that's the way they make their apps. So they position it as, hey, your iOS apps that you make are going to be amazing for that platform that you love. Tee hee hee, iPad apps are going to get real good. Yeah, I think it's 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 very very clever. Um, and I and you know this is. And I, they, they, I think the fact that they did it was brilliant because if they didn't do this, so much conversation post WWDC would be focused on the fact that Apple didn't talk about this. Um, they did this last year when they showed off the iMac Pro, mm -hmm. that they are doing a very good job of understanding and I think listening to the, to the, the enthusiast community and understanding what could take the sales out of the stuff that we're doing. Mm -hmm. And they are adjusting this specific keynote to address some of those points. There are unanswered questions about Mac laptops and stuff, but the announcements that they have had this week have far outshone any of that. Oh, yeah. I, I, I agree with all that. I think it's a great move. It, like you said, it's it solves the weakness for both platforms. Mm -hmm. Because uh, you take Apple's two smaller platforms, and instead of also splitting developer time across the two smaller platforms, it gives developers a way to say, like, well, you know, we can kill two birds with one stone. I, I think it's, I think it's totally great. The I, I I'm so fascinated by Apple talking about it ahead of time. Like, I think it makes perfect sense for them to do mm -hmm. it, but it's just it was so unlike Apple. It, is. It, it, it like watching the keynote, it did it really felt like falling into an alternate universe where it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
Are they giving us a roadmap? Like, is that? Did they just hand us a road? Like, I've ne- you, you never hand us anything at these these keynotes, and they're like, oh no, but look, and they said like a time frame. It was, it was very interesting. Um, I, I just the only reason why I'm not giving it bolt of lightning is simply because it's not a thing that's happening right now. I understand. That's the only that's yeah. the only reason I'm doing it. Right? Is like, I love it. It's great. I can't wait to see what happens next year. And I think it's it's useful for developers to have that time frame. But for some, like for iPad apps, I can see that developers would spend more time making them more powerful. But it is a little bit of a holding pattern of like, be aware that this thing is this thing is coming. So that's the only reason why I don't give it a lightning bolt. Even though I agree with you, like it's incredibly important. It's very interesting to to think about what does this mean for the platforms, and I love it. But I'm giving I'm giving my one lightning bolt across the mm. desert sky to Siri shortcuts. Like that that's yep. the thing that was that was really quite striking. This episode of Cortex is brought to you by Fracture. Almost everyone takes and shares photos online, but so few of those photos end up printed and even fewer end up on display. You should focus on the moments that mean the most in your life by turning your favorite digital memories into a meaningful photo decoration. Fracture prints are made by printing directly onto glass and they come ready to display right out of the box, even including a wall hanger or a little stand for you to put them on as well. Now, as I mentioned in the show, and I really meant it, I have ordered a fracture of some of the really important moments that happened to me over WWDC week. I have a fracture of Tim Cook with the connected artwork over his shoulder. I also ordered a fracture for our live show and also an image put on a beautiful fracture on some lovely piece of glass of just a bunch of me and my friends just walking down the street in San Jose. They're going to go right in front of me. I have on the wall, just in the corner of my wall, some fracture prints of some important moments in my professional career. This is the perfect thing for me. Now I will be able to, whenever I'm in my office, whenever I'm in mega office, I can look up and I can see moments that mean a lot to me. And that's why I get Fracture Prints. Not only are they wonderful for you, they also make thoughtful, unique gifts. And don't forget, Father's Day is around the corner so you can get uh, get your Fracture Prints in quickly. I even did these all on my iPhone. I was just using Safari on my iPhone and I uploaded the image right from my camera roll. Like it's super, super easy to do. Their prints are hand made in Gainesville, Florida, from their wonderful factory, sourced from U.S. materials with a sleek, frameless design that will go with any decor. Fracture is a green company, and they operate a carbon-neutral factory. Fractory, I love that, by the way. <laughs> so good. You can visit FractureMe.com slash Cortex and get yourself a special discount on your first Fracture order. And don't forget to pick Cortex in their one-question survey because that will help support this show. Save those memories from the phone gallery wasteland. Go to FractureMe.com slash Cortex right now. Our thanks to Fracture for their support of this show and Relay FM. Siri shortcuts. What seems very clever about it is that they've done the beginner level and then the advanced level. Yep. Right. So there's like Siri shortcuts is workflow, right? For us workflow nerds, like it seems like all the complicated stuff is there. But on the basic level, like if you're explaining to someone who doesn't care about any of this stuff, there's just a way now to tell Siri to do a thing in an app. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That like that's the basic idea. That's that's, that's that's so they did this thing where you can basically tell Siri that action that I just performed. Whenever I say to you, add a new to-do, mm-hmm. I want you to open things and mm-hmm. let me add a new to-do. And you yeah. can do this from anywhere. You can do it on the watch. You can do it on the home part if, if things are, you're able to perform these actions. Yeah. And, and what, what has been interesting, like what I have found interesting to see with developers is um, like part of the reason why it's such a lightning bolt and it's I only realized it in retrospect is – I just like Apple has solved these two problems with their platforms with um, merging them with iPad and and Mac in some way. uh, I feel like they pulled off this amazing judo move with Siri shortcuts where everybody knows like Siri's not that great compared to all of the other voice assistants. And they did this move where they've 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 like infinitely expanded in every direction all of the things that Siri can do without them having to teach Siri how to do any of it Mm -hmm. and it's all local on the device like Siri can just interact with this app and it's like it's a great judo move because in some ways like Siri doesn't have to be any smarter in terms of natural language processing like that part doesn't have to get any better it's just 
it allows Siri to press these buttons to do the things for you. And it's just, it's so impressive and it's doubly impressive seeing from the developer end of it, how much Siri shortcuts can interact with even without the developers having changed anything in their app. Like it doesn't need to be added in. This method of the way that, that, that some of the APIs have worked for the last couple of years means if you're developing to the specific API that everybody has suggested that they develop to, it exposes these actions in the operating system right now. Mm -hmm. Like a developer doesn't have to do anything yeah. if they've been following the kind of the suggested rules of the road that Siri can already unearth these actions and launch an application straight into it or just perform the action mm -hmm. with nothing needing to be done. Yeah, And then Apple is adding all of the tools in to allow you to do more with it, to add these buttons to it, and to basically build this underpinning system to allow Siri to do effectively anything. Mm -hmm. And then there's an app. The mm -hmm. app is called Shortcuts. It's an app you download from the App Store. And if you take advantage of Shortcuts, you get the most powerful version of workflow that could have ever existed. It's been made by the same team, same yeah. people. The app looks exactly the same. Mm -hmm. It has all of the things in it. Um, from what I understand, it has everything that workflow had. Nothing is being taken out. You can move your workflows into this application mm -hmm. is what I have heard mm -hmm. will, when this app ships because it's currently not in the beta right now. And then you will be able to create these new shortcuts, which is a much better name than workflow. I yeah. love the name. To do basically anything your device can do and you can chain them. So you could say, for example, hey, good morning. Mm -hmm. Turn on the lights. Turn on the Wemo with that's power in the coffee maker. Start playing your favorite morning flash briefing show. Mm -hmm. Open up your favorite news app and get you ready for the day. Like it is huge like you can make these huge chains which workflow could always do but it is now exposed out to the system in such a powerful way in and it is so easy to get swept up in this stuff because there's so many things that we don't know yet there are going to be limitations but if this is able to pull off what i've seen on stage and even what i've seen just with developers tinkering around with this yeah the way i use my devices is going to change significantly. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, I will yeah. be turning on the ability to call Siri from anywhere and I'm going to be speaking to my devices a all the time. A lot more, yeah. Because in theory, every time I want to perform some kind of action, I will be able to ask my device to set a bunch of parameters for me to open some applications and get me ready to perform a specific action in a way that is as simple and yet more so than Workflow ever was. It is mind-blowing what yeah. they have done yeah, one, one of the things with the wwdc's is, is like you said it can be very easy to get carried away and so I, I feel like i always try to try to temper expectations especially after many years of these things uh but i am giving myself a bit of a pass on this one simply because it is the workflow team and mm -hmm. and the things that they have done in the past like what they were able to accomplish with that app without apple was already so impressive Just wild yeah yeah it was beyond what any of us ever thought uh was possible and i think for a very large number of people was the key tool that allowed them to move a huge portion or all of their work onto ios devices and so the fact that it is that team that has done this siri integration the siri shortcuts I'm very confident that it is going to be like the powerful tool that was demoed on stage and that like, yes, of course, there will always be restrictions, but it but it won't be the kind of thing that I would normally expect from Apple where it's like, oh, we have some automation, but we've given you baby automation. Like, I don't I don't think that's what we're getting here. No. Um, but no, it's it's a huge deal. And if there is one thing that is true about Apple is that they are often slow to do something but they but when they get there they tend to do it in a very nice way and and this is like boy apple has been very slow to any kind of automation or scripting on ios devices and this is the first time they're really opening the door to they're opening the door to a thing that can have a loop and variables which is which is opening the door to general purpose computing and it looks like they've done it in in just an incredible way and you know we've we've talked about software acquisitions in the past on the show and how it's always like oh sad trombone day mm -hmm. when your favorite thing gets acquired and i can't wait to get my hands on shortcuts but i i think i can say right now like this looks like maybe one of the most successful software acquisitions ever 
if this becomes what the foundation of automation and scripting on iOS devices are, combine that with the judo trick of making Siri infinitely better without having to actually make her understand things better. It's the more I think about it, the more impressed I am. I am by that that whole that whole new thing that that's coming in. Uh, so I'm I am really looking forward to getting my hands on it. I was like. I'll wait until a couple of public betas before I put it on my machine. I'm traveling. I don't mm. want to put beta software on mm. my... Now it's like, the instant there's a public beta that has Siri shortcuts available, it's like, that is going right on yeah, my phone. Yeah, as soon as the shortcut <laughs> app shows up, if it shows up during the beta period, I'm installing it immediately. Yeah. I guess the last thing that I've been thinking about in regards to Siri shortcuts is the idea of Siri as a digital assistant. Mm-hmm. As someone who works with an assistant, there is, I think, a misconception in technology that digital assistants have to work completely on machine learning Mm. like that they must be these things that can anticipate your every need and cater to them when that's not necessarily what it's like to work with somebody else like sometimes you just have a thing you want to ask someone and have them perform an action based upon it Mm -hmm. and that's what siri shortcuts is right you can just say like do this thing for me and the thing is done it doesn't need to be constantly siri being like oh i have a million ideas for you and I've learned every pattern of your life and looked into your calendar and all of your email and here is this thing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need to be that way. And I'm actually enthused more than I have been in years about Siri as a product based upon the fact that it is a very complex machine that I can give very specific instructions to now in a way that I haven't been able to do before. Because the way it's been before is I would ask Siri a question and hope that Siri understands what I want and gives me the result. But now I program what I want the results to look like and then record a shortcut with my own voice as to what I want Siri to understand. Then whenever it hears that specific trigger phrase, we'll perform those series of actions. Most of the time, that's all I ever really want it to do. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need to be smart in the sense of the anticipation of my needs. And it does an element of that still, right? But a lot of the time, all I ever really want is for Siri to, or any, or like the Echo, any of these things, to just perform the action that I expect. Mm. And a lot of the time, I can program that once and then it will work great. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Like it's, again, I just, I just think of it as this, this opening the door to this automation that can be done. Like I'm interested to see they were, they were saying on stage that Siri will have these suggestions for you. And that's always sort of fallen flat in the past because Siri can't be a mind reader. And I I do have a little bit more anticipation that those suggestions will be more useful when Siri has like a pattern of when you do particular things, when you're invoking particular shortcuts, like, and that'll be great. But yeah, 100%, the big win here is turning Siri from a thing that I use as an egg timer to a thing that I can very easily see becoming just an integral part of my workflow and, yep. and an integral part of, of my life. I was already thinking, Mike, you know, because I was like, hmm, the only thing Siri can't do is like automatically kick off at a particular time mm-hmm. a thing, right? As I got like a cron job is what I'm looking for there. But then I thought, well... I could just have, you know, like a recording play in my house at a particular time to be the thing that kicks off a Siri action. Oh, right. Wow. Like I'll, basically yeah. I'm thinking I could leave it my glass cube where things are always running. It's a possibility that I could just have my main computer just kick off a sound at a particular time of me speaking and invoke a, invoke a Siri action. It goes to a HomePod. Yeah, Why it goes it to done? a HomePod. Yeah. So that's pretty fun. I'm looking forward to what can be done with Siri shortcuts. There is one thing I have wanted since I begun time tracking that this may allow, which is to start a timer with my voice. Oh my god, that was the first thing I thought of. Is like the number of times I want to say like start a whatever timer. It happens all the time. That was the that was the very first thing I was thinking. Just so you know, on the current version of the beta, you can already do this. Sweet, because any workflow in the current workflow app can be turned into a Siri shortcut now, mm-hmm. like the basic version. So you could do it now. I don't know what it would look like. There might be some adjustments you'd have to make. Yeah. But 
this is something I even looked into creating my own echo skill at one point to try and understand <laughs> what that would require because this is just some, something I want to be able to do because sometimes I'm like halfway through a job and I'm like, oh, I need to set the timer. Yeah. And then I have to stop what I'm doing, go to the, an app or go to notification center. But I, really I want to do is, hey, computer, start a timer. Yeah. And then I can categorize it later if mm-hmm. that's necessary. But like that is gonna be amazing yeah uh, i have i have buttons everywhere i can possibly have mm-hmm. buttons to launch the timers to start whatever it is that i'm doing but nonetheless the ability to do it by voice will be amazing to make that work so yeah that was that was the first thing i was thinking of. was like man if it could just do this it'll be great i'm also looking forward to coming up with my command words mm. because you have to create words for everything like a phrase for everything you know so like i'm trying to think of this like two-step system so yeah. like a category and an action yeah. You know, so like tweet something or timer this, you know, like timer sponsor, timer work. Like I'm looking forward to creating that like system. The, yeah, this 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 is the keyboard shortcuts mm-hmm. slash text expander slash keyboard maestro issue of when you get into this automation, you have to create your own taxonomies. Mm-hmm. And I think it's going to be interesting to see how everybody who is a power user of this thing ends up creating their own Siri little language that they talk to, which again is another just incredible win that everybody doesn't have to do the same thing in the same way with Mm -hmm. Siri. It's like you can say it the way it makes sense for you. And if you're like us, you want to create your little squirrely system of like, here's the way I say the thing. That's great. If you just want to say it in more natural language, that's great. Siri will just make it work in either way. Like talk about making the HomePod useful. Yeah. It's gone from this device I have him in the house just because it's a nice speaker Mm -hmm. to potentially it's going to become one of the most important mechanisms for me to perform actions in my daily life like yeah it's pretty incredible I'm very excited for Siri shortcuts and and I really hope that the enthusiasm that we have right now based upon everything we've seen and heard is carried through yeah that it is as good as it seems and you can be rest assured we are going to follow this through <laughs> until September and beyond. But there were some other things. I, I, I don't want to let this episode end without touching on them. Hmm. Um, screen time, which is this new system of showing you information about how you use your device. It shows you what apps you're in, what web pages you're in, how many times a day you pick up your phone, all of this type of stuff synced across all of your devices. Does this interest you? It feels like it's right in our wheelhouse as a thing. Yeah, I've been getting a, a lot of feedback from people on Twitter about this one. And and this is a case where I think it's hard to explain where I, I, ha- I have my ho- own time tracking system set mm-hmm. up. So this to me, I am very glad that it's part of the system. Uh, I will want to see those numbers. but for, But for me, this falls into the category much more of just it will be interesting to see. You know, more data is always better. But I don't feel like this is going to be a huge revelation for me in any way mm. or, or even like an incredibly important tool because I'm mostly already doing manual time tracking about what activity am I engaged in and my devices except when I'm traveling for conferences are already so locked down that I don't feel that I have the relationship that some people do with their phones where they're using them too much like I, I don't have that feeling i have other problems with the phone bothering me too much with notifications but that's a different thing from like oh i picked it up and i spent 30 minutes on twitter when i didn't mean to or like whatever because i just don't have those things on the phone normally so i'm gonna be interested to see it i think it's a great tool and 100 percent, i think it's a it's a great addition to the operating system I think Apple did handle it very well, the idea like we want to report to you what you're doing with the device. So I'm, I'm very glad it's in there. But when everyone's like, oh, it's time tracking. Isn't that exciting? It's like, well, yes, but I like I already have like this this Rube Goldberg machine to yeah. track my whole life. It'll be interesting, but not vital to me. I'm keen to see how this information reflects what I believe is my accurate form of time tracking. Mm. Like I how does the how do these two things stack up because yeah. one is me reporting it the other is my device being a little snitch right <laughs> right the device really knows what's going on and i'm interested to see how in the same way that when i went from not tracking my time to tracking my time how it enlightened me about how i actually spent my time and then we're going to get some real cold hard information yeah rather than just what i think is going on yeah i i, I have to say that like well, for me, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm interested to see. 
I, I, I think there are going to be a lot of people come September or October who are more or less uh, are forced to go through the thing that we have we have yeah. told people about you, when they start time yeah. tracking. Yeah, of you the, laughed. Like, you laughed. Like, you wait. <laughs> like, yeah. All the listeners are like, oh, like, I know what I do all day. Like, oh, no, you don't. You, don't, right? you have no you idea. Have no you think idea. You, know. <laughs> you pick up your phone. Do you know it even does stuff like it will tell you how many notifications you got? Oh, that's interesting. So it would say like in the last 24 hours, you got 159 message notifications, 25 right. Slack notes. So again, it's like all that sort of stuff is that cold hard data I think is going to help me make some decisions. And the notification stuff in general looks very interesting. Yeah. The, the, it, it, yeah. They gave us one of the exact things we spoke about, which was a notification comes in and you can from the notification say, I don't want to see this anymore. Yeah, th- this is the one. This is the one place where uh, I am very consciously tamping down any expectations because before the keynote, I made my little wish list and I like my big, my gigantic, taking up half the page items were like serious improvements to do not disturb and serious improvements to notifications. I'm gonna give them like a half mm-hmm. tick on those. Like there have been improvements, um, but for me, uh, this this I'll have to wait until I see the beta because the implementation details really matter this might be a thing that doesn't help me at all depending on the details of how they implement it it might be very helpful but uh i'm happy to see that there's motion in the right direction i just hope that this isn't the thing where apple improves something and then they leave it for several years i have to dig around in in the settings but what i'm what i'm interested in and what i don't understand at the time of our recording is you know there's this distinction where there is a bedtime mode where it keeps things silent for a longer period of time, which may be very useful for me in my my mornings of wanting to be separated from yep. the world. Like I'll just set that bedtime ends at you know noon and and see how that works. But the one that I'm very interested to play around with, and obviously when someone shows me like, oh, I put the 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 beta on my phone, what I can't do is say, oh, I would like to take your phone and I'm going to put it into child mode. Could you have another device where I can set up as a parent to enforce restrictions on this because. I'm very curious to see the exact details of what they're, uh, I think it's called downtime. Screen time. No, no. Screen time is the tracking one. Oh. Downtime is a mode that you can set. And I think you can only set for a child device where I don't think even in the current beta, it's fully baked because I was trying to even just look at the settings. Uh, But again, I may have to be looking at a parent device, looking at a child device. But the text description is that downtime allows you to set hours where particular apps are unavailable? Yeah, so there's, there's, this is kind of two parts. There's something you can do to yourself and something you can do to a device that you manage yeah, so as like a parent. Yeah, so bedtime is the thing you can do well, to but yourself. but there's also something called app limits where you can say, I only want to use Instagram for an hour a day. Right. And when you get to that hour, a pop-up comes up and they're like, you said you didn't want to look at this anymore. Mm-hmm. Maybe you should stop. But it's like suggestions and you can override it. Mm-hmm. But if you manage a child, a device that's classed as a child's device, you can straight up say no. And that app cannot be used and it is locked out. Yeah. And even because of some of the ways that um, I think it's called universal linking. So you know when sometimes you tap on a URL, like a tweet URL, and it opens the Twitter app. Mm-hmm. If an app uses that, if you say I don't want to use Twitter, you also can't look at it on the web browser. Right, yeah, which I think is very clever. It's very clever. And yeah. It's one of those things where Apple seemed like they were giving something to developers that they wanted, and now it's like, no, oh, ha, ha, ha. Right, <laughs> why now, did I do that? Yeah, now we know the website's associated with yep. your app so we can block the whole thing. So, but yet, for someone like you who likes to lock, this this is like past gray and forcing on future gray, and I wonder how is that going to work yeah, for, th- this a, is, per, yeah. for an adult setting it up for themselves on another device that they own. Yeah, this is what I mean. Like the implementation details really matter. Like I may be wrong about my guess that I even need to set up as a child device. I just don't know. I think, I think it needs to be a separate Apple ID within a family yeah, group. Yeah, I, I think so too. But but here is a case where, uh, like, if I have to go through a gigantic rigmarole to set it up once, like I'm totally happy doing that. Like I whatever. Think it's completely um, possible that you could do this. Yeah. The only other question then is like ability to break out of that mode if I have to. Right, it's like mm. I just need to I just need to see yeah. like what are the details, but I I am hopeful that this gives me a, a little bit of a workaround to what we said last time is like my main thing of like I want periods where some apps are quiet and other apps are not, and I 
think I might be able to get that by enforcing downtime on myself and saying like, oh, in the morning, I message in Slack and like everybody's quiet unless you're the calendar or your omni focus. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, I'm just going to be curious to see how that works out. So I'm, I am, uh, I'm hopeful about how that goes and, and very curious, uh, once I get my hands on the beta to actually monkey around with it, because I, I can't monkey around with a developer's phone and be like, let me just put all these restrictions on and see how it works. And they're like, oh no, it's a beta. I've yeah. totally locked you out of your device. I'm sorry. I think the, it, the only other thing I'm doing at Stub that I like is that it's getting smarter in some ways that like you can say, when this meeting ends or mm. when I leave this place. Yeah, leaving the place is the really yeah. interesting one. And I was also wondering, you mentioned it last time, the thing that we never even thought about. Like, I'm just wondering, Siri shortcuts. Can you, I wonder like, what what can you do with do not disturb and, and Siri shortcuts? Because I was, this is actually what I was thinking mm. about with like uh, a recording of my own voice in my office that says the thing and like set up, set up everything Could all quiet. Could you turn on do not disturb yeah. with a Siri shortcut? Like, basically. can you turn on Siri? Yeah. Can you do that? Or can you do other things? Like I'm just very can you curious. Can locate them? Yeah. I mean, we don't know, we don't know, right? I think this is going to be the power that comes out of the shortcuts app. And like, will that enable you to turn these on in any interesting ways? This is the stuff that we don't know yet because yeah. no one's actually really been able to play around the app in detail. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, again, this is where I'm very curious to see the implementation details uh but I'm, I'm just glad that there is there is some motion in the correct direction and we have brand new grouping notifications by app never never yeah. been seen before never brand, imagine m- someone imagine coming up with something like we that could do. The blue. <laughs> I, I, I enjoyed that moment it's like oh here we are again <laughs> do you know we haven't even spoken about the most important part yet which is the fact that i can now create an emoji of my own face it's called memoji and I can create stickers and I can call you over FaceTime and you can see my amazing cartoon head. And it could be anything I want it to be with beards and, and glasses. Imagine. Mike. Like, yeah. Mike, there's... I know you want to talk about Memoji, mm-hmm. but it's like we're many days into this conference. <laughs> I'm, I'm very tired. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't yet done any exercise mm-hmm. for today as well. And I'm afraid that... This is like opening the gates of hell mm-hmm, if we discuss mm-hmm. Memoji. So I don't, I, can we, let's put a pin in that. Okay. Put a pin in that. I am curious, however, why aren't you wearing your Apple Watch? I think we're going to put a pin in that as well. <laughs>